Hey everybody, it's Brian again from PMV Homesteading. Want to do the update for the large grow tent and be back from uh, my work assignment down in uh, Arizona. The tent really took off in certain areas and uh, kind of died off in others. Let me get the camera. I got my glasses here and we'll go take a tour of the tent. So you can see the cilantro went crazy. I don't think Paula came down here and harvested enough of the uh, cilantro. But it's uh, going into full flower mode, and it's up to the lights, so you can see that it's uh, really taken off. But the soil was really, really dry when I got back. And uh, I noticed there was a lot of burning back there on this, uh, this kale especially. And this one here had really taken off, and it was a little bit dry. I gave these a pretty good dosing of water before I left, and Paula came down, and I think she just didn't do enough of a good soaking when she was watering but uh, we harvested off uh, this here really heavily this is the uh, red russian kale and we have harvested off a lot of really big leaves on this you know over the the last two days since i got back and had uh, dinner salads with it and it's been really really a nice taste but uh, i don't know if i have any of the really big leaves left on here because we came through and we really thinned this out in the last two days uh, it's got the really nice red coloring on these leaves, so it tastes really good. The white one back there, we thinned off a little bit, but it was pretty dry. I mean, you can see back in the back of that tray how dry it's gotten compared to, you know, up here in the front. And then the little uh, Apollo plant, I don't think it got any water, so it uh, completely is probably just gone now at this point, but you can see all the little seed heads have popped open. And so I've been, I came down here and harvested a bunch of those already and saved those in a bag. And I'm going to use those to do some plant propagation or reseeding in another tray, you know, and save myself a couple bucks saving the seeds from this plant. Because I remember I got a box of those things and it had like, I think, 20 seeds in it and it cost me like six bucks. So I figured, you know, one handful of those right there, it's probably got, you know, 10, 15 seeds in it. So if I save those and then just, you know, over the year, I'll just we used to grow some more in here inside the large grow tent this winter and you can see we came down and we've harvested pretty heavy on the chives so they're uh, they're going to need to regrow you can see they're regrowing up through here and then this uh, parsley Paula came down and really hammered this because she made a whole bunch of dressing she made a whole quart of dressing with the uh, homemade stuff that she makes with the basil and the parsley and the kefir and so she's really harvested the parsley off uh, the basil back here has really gone to flower, so I need to come down here and uh, pinch off a bunch of stuff because it wasn't like this when I left. This kale here is really doing well. I mean, I'm surprised. It must just be a hardier kale that can withstand having the, uh, the drought conditions because it's it, it really took off and we harvested off uh, one meal when I got back on uh, Thursday night with this kale here. And it it's, seems to be regrowing pretty quickly. I really like this kale too because it's really soft. So when we get rid of the, when we get done with the red Russian kales, I'm going to have uh, probably three trays of this Bates kale. I really love the taste of this. And a guy I work with, uh, Mark, he's going to actually start growing some of this in some of his grow tents that he grows uh, medicinal herbs in. But he's going to set up a tent and probably try growing some of this Bates kale because his wife likes kale. So hopefully it'll go pretty well for him. And then of course we got the uh, the beta salad mix over here. It uh, it had some areas where it got a little bit too dry and kind of crispy, but uh, hopefully we can rejuvenate that back. And uh, it needs to be thinned pretty heavily. It's, it's pretty overcrowded, so I'm going to come through here and I think I'm just going to buzz through and cut some rows into this and just let the other ones just kind of flourish and get a little bigger. So that's going to be one of the ones that we're going to put outside this spring. And then down here on the, uh, the Asian greens, we've got uh, pretty good regrowth, and then they've got the flowering coming on that. So I need to do another harvest of these two trays, and then I'll probably be taking them out because we need to start our eggplants next weekend and get those growing, and you know the seed starts going for that because they're about a, you're supposed to start those a week ahead of the tomato plants. So next weekend I'm going to start the eggplants and then the weekend after I'm going to put the starts in here for, well, not the starts, but the uh, the seeds 
to grow the seedlings of the tomatoes and then I'll just progress you know for the different plants as we get closer to production but uh, you can see the pepper plant back there it wasn't getting a, a lot of water so he kind of fell over but you can see the peppers on that guy they're pretty good size and uh, a little yellow one back there but you can kind of see the little peppers on that starting to turn so I'm excited to see what they're going to turn out like and then those will end up going outside and then I noticed that we got a pop-up tomato plant in the pepper that was a pop-up so you can see the tomato so what were these were and I mean you remember if you look back at the videos these two little pepper plants had come out of the compost that I put around the tomatoes when I used to have the tomato bags inside of this tent and so I saved the little peppers and put them in pots and then now I've got a tomato coming out of the saved peppers that came from the compost that these that actually could be an indigo rose because I used to drop some of the indigo rose right into the trays or the bags just to reseed and then they would pop up so that could be another indigo rose so our little indigo rose tomatoes that some of you may miss inside this tent I mean I, I, I miss those tomatoes because I love the taste of them so we may have one already started and we're going to plant that outside at the same time as I transplant those peppers so we've already got a pretty good sized tomato going in here and then we've got the the cilantro. Paula's come down here and harvested off some of this while I was gone, but uh, you can see some of it got a little bit dried out, got a little burned, but uh, that's okay. It's just, you know, easy to seed and regrow. We're going to take all of these and put these out in the, uh, the gardens this year, all these six-inch pots, and then just let those kind of spread on their own in the gardens. And then we can just walk around picking uh, cilantro as we're walking around just to get a nice flavor and when we're doing our grazing. <laughs> that one there's for you, Praj. <laughs> we're outside doing our grazing in our yard, just walking around picking and eating. All right. Well, this has been Brian from PMB Homesteading. I'll talk to you guys again. Bye.